Hey everyone, it's time to Nephis and chill, and before you start the video off together with me, um, I'm going to let you know that there is a written version of this on the ESO University website should you not want to listen to me talk about the item set changes and also the new item sets including the arsenal of mythics we are ex basically going to receive for update 34, otherwise known as the High Isle chapter. Let's start with the overland sets. So we have three overland sets. Um, and one of them is called Blessing of High Isle. This is the Light Armor set. Uh, Two-piece bonuses, Max Magicka. Three-piece bonuses, Max Recovery. And four-piece bonuses, Max Magicka. And the fifth-piece bonus is actually quite interesting. Um, when you are healed while in combat, you increase your weapon and spell damage by 369 for 5 seconds. Notice that it doesn't say overhealed. Notice that it doesn't say you have to be damaged to get uh, that... 369 weapon and spell damage. It just says you have to be healed. Um, I haven't been able to do a lot of testing with this, whether I need to be the healer or someone else needs to be healing me. It makes it sound like uh, it could be any source of healing, but still, weapon and spell damage by 369 for five seconds, not like, not bad. However, I do question the um, other two to four piece bonuses in within the context of pure damage, right? Uh, Steadfast Metal, which is a medium armor set for Overland, is going to give you Stam Recovery, Max Stam, and another uh, bonus of Max Stamina. While you have a food buff active, reduce the cost of your core combat abilities by 25%. For those of you confused, core combat abilities just simply means Block, Roll Dodge, Break Free, and Sprint. So while you have a food buff active, all those, is, you know, all those actions are reduced by 25%. Lastly, for the Overland sets, uh, Sister's Scowl, which is the Heavy Armor set, that gives you Max Stam, Max Health, Max Stam, not bad for a Heavy Armor set. Uh, the fifth piece bonus, however, is a little weird. When you bash an enemy, place Sister's Scowl on them for 15 seconds. After that, when you hit them with a light attack, a target with Sister's Scowl takes 2091 frost damage up to once every second. Um, not, not exactly sure if I would use this, but I, I think probably the effect will look cool. Alright, so crafted sets. Next up, we have Order's Wrath, which gives you critical chance, weapon and spell damage, and two more bonuses of critical chance, including one on the fifth piece bonus. So that's a lot of crit. I think this is going to be probably be the next Julianos, because, or even better actually, because look at the fifth piece bonus, the actual fifth piece bonus. The, the fifth piece bonuses increases your critical damage and critical healing by 8%. So with the hit taken to uh, the champion points, including Fighting Fitness and Backstabber, I think this set is a really solid option. I mean, this is probably going to... I hope they don't touch this like they did with Diamond's Victory back in Blackwood, but I think this is going to be a very solid craftable set um, for a lot of scenarios, uh, even for people who are starting out in the game. Next, we have Serpent's Disdain, the next craftable set. Max Stamina, Max Health, Max Magicka. Increases duration of status effects you apply by 16 seconds. I have a feeling this is more for uh, like PvP instances, more so than PvE instances. Uh, I can't really... I'm trying to think of a way that I would use this within the endgame context, but I, I'm sure there are like fun applications of this somewhere, somewhere here. The next is, of course, the <laughs> very interesting set. A 12-piece bonus set called Druid's Braid. Um, max health, max magic, and max health, pretty much in sequential uh, repetition. So, what's really cool about this actually is that they are they ramp up the amount of uh, health, magic, and stamina you get the more pieces you have on. So they're trying to like incentivize you, trying to get to twelve or as close to twelve pieces as possible or active. Um, I've already have some kind of like theory crafting ideas with this in regards to maybe like. Uh, being a werewolf or being an emperor or being an emperor in Imperial City with Imperial Physique or something. But I'm trying to uh, get a sense of how useful this will be, at least within the first three to four uh, item piece bonuses. So we'll see what happens here. Next up, the category of trial sets. Uh, World of the Depths, it is a light armor set, gives you spell and weapon damage, you get Minor Slayer, uh, more weapon and spell damage, you get crit chance, and when you deal damage with a light attack, you apply World of the Depths to the target, dealing an amount of frost damage over 8 seconds, and when that effect ends, a 5 meter whirlpool is created under that target for 6 seconds, and deals even more frost damage every 1 second. And this entire, this entire process can occur once every 18 seconds, and of course scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. Next up is Pillager's Prophet. 
Uh, it is basically a support set, gives you minor ages, gives you 4% uh, more healing done, so kind of intended for healers or maybe even tanks. Uh, 1096 max magicka, and if you had the perfected piece, um, you do get the 129 magic recovery and the actual bonus effect of the set is when you cast an ultimate ability while you're in combat it grants 5% of your ultimate spent as ultimate up to a max of 20 to up to 11 group members within 12 meters every 2 seconds over 10 seconds I'm going to simplify this real quick for you uh, at, at, so that sounds really confusing so to sum it up with this set you can give up to a maximum of 100 ult to 11 other group members over 10 but basically within the 10 seconds because it does a, that ultimate gain does take every two seconds so that's just it just 100 ultimate in 10 seconds and uh th there is a cooldown on this so that you don't build purely for old gen which can be heavily abused i think by a you know a lot of raid teams out there uh in P within the pve context so or even PvP, really. Group members can only be affected by the set every 45 seconds. Okay, and the next set is Coral Riptide. This is the medium armor set. Uh, at first, the first iteration of the set was not very well done, in my opinion, for sure. I mean, who wants to be at 0%, you know, stamina and get the effect bonuses? But anyway, they did change it, they did update it, and I think we are seeing a, uh, I think, potential new best in slot set. Um, for a lot of scenarios next patch, or rather for update 34, we do have crit chance, minor slayer, weapon and spell damage, and a more crit chance while giving us weapon and spell damage by up to 740 based on your missing stamina, reaching the maximum at 33% stamina. That's a lot. Um, I think you can easily maintain that, especially if you can expect more to stamina. So the more stamina you have, I mean, it's obviously a percentage off of your pull, not a uh, flat amount. So the more stamina you have, the easier probably this will be um, to manage, especially in uh, fights that demand you to that demand for you to use core combat abilities like break free, roll dodge, or stuff like that. So we'll see what happens. Perlicent Ward. This is the heavy armor tank set or even support set. Um, it gives you max health, minor aegis, four percent healing taken. Gives you another uh, bonus of max health if you have the perfected pieces. And the fifth piece bonus is really cool. Um, I think this will be a really great set, particularly for prog groups or even like optimized groups. Uh, I think this will be better than Yonokrin in within that context, especially for progression groups, because not only do you, you know, get these uh, two to four piece bonuses of health and healing taken and you know, mitigation, you also do get Perilous and Ward which basically uh, not only is active if the tank dies, but also increases the weapon and spell damage by up to 180 based on number of group members that are alive. So if, everybody, if every other group member is alive, you get 180 weapon and spell damage for everybody. But when other players die, up and uh, it's basically going to give you more mitigation for the tank wearing um, the, the, the set. Um, not only the person wearing the set, but also everybody in the group. So you can see why this is really cool for progression. Not only is a tank getting more mitigation, but they're giving that more mitigation, that unique mitigation to everybody else in the group. That's, you know, within within the uh, range of this tank. So, and, and the range is a given, but we're gonna assume at least 28 meters. But that's 6% mitigation per person that's dead on the floor. So imagine that really. And uh, yeah, I think it's a solid proxy for sure. Before we move on to what sets were changed for update 34, I'm going to go over the new mythics coming out for High Isle. The first one's Davra Sabatons. While sprinting, you gain a stack of Draconic Scales every half a second, granting you 660 armor up to 20 stacks max. When you stop running, you deal 158 physical damage per stack in an 8 meter shockwave, you gain the damage shield equal to damage dealt, and retain Draconic Scales for 10 seconds but cannot gain new stacks. At 20 stacks, this damage will also stun for 3 seconds. The damage scales off the higher of your physical or spell resist resistance. I think this is probably, I don't know, not a very good mythic in terms of either design. I mean, the design or the mechanic for triggering is interesting, but like the ultimate design of it, I think, has kind of fallen short of my expectations. I don't really see any 
any really scenario where I would use this in PvP or PvE. Like, I cannot imagine with the other available mythics or item set options, you would be like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on these boots and be like, you know what, I'm going to just not sprint. Or, like, rely on, you know, physical or spell resistance uh, for damage scaling. I don't, I don't know, it's a really weird one. Uh, I hope they change it going forward. Uh, the next mythic I want to talk about is Left-Hander's Aegis Belt. Roll Dodge no longer evades attack and instead grants a damage shield that absorbs up to 24,139 damage over one second. That's insane. This damage shield is unaffected by Battle Spirit. So there are a lot of scenarios where I've talked to 1VXers or um, small scalers and uh, what usually gets them isn't just people mowing them down with abilities, but specific abilities like AoEs. So, and you can't roll dodge AoEs, right? Or most AoEs. Um, and if you roll with this mythic on, you get a shield within for that lasts for a second. So 24k shield that's not affected by battle spirit. Yeah, I mean, I think this is something definitely worth testing out. Um, Moro's Whispers is the next mythic, and this is a really interesting mythic, especially in light of the slight nerf to Harpooner's Waiting Kilt, but also the fact that it's even better than the current Harpooner's Waiting Kilt um, critical chance that it gives us at 10 full stacks throughout the fight. Moro's Whispers actually gives up to uh, 1,528 crit chance. Uh, and this scales off of how many Shadow Lord's Library books, the Mages Guild books, you've collected on that one character. Uh, one big downside of this mythic, obviously, is that you have to have had collected those books on the specific characters you're trying to use it on. So it's not, those books are not account wide. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, good luck with this. And, but also, on the side note, it's a really cool mythic in the sense that it gives you 10% more AP, 10%, or not AP, but alliance. Uh, rank points towards your alliance rank and your skill line, 10% increased inspiration, and 15% more XP ki off of kills, which stacks with probably Ambrosia's 150% uh, XP scrolls, your ESO plus XP bonus, uh, double XP event, so I'm really looking forward to using this actually for finally getting to like, I don't know, 3600 CP. Anyway, next two mythics we have is Oaken Soul Ring, uh, and this is going to be a very popular mythic, I can tell already, judging from the amount of YouTube videos and a lot of people, you know, chattering about it. And I'm excited about this too, because, well, I think there will be an endgame, um, application of this, uh, ring, specifically for VAES hard mode. So anyway, let me explain. While equipped, you are unable to swap between your primary and backup weapon sets and gain Major Berserk, Major Courage, Major Brutality, Major Sorcery, Major Prophecy, Major Savagery, Major Force, Major Protection, Major Resolve, Minor Fortitude, Minor Intellect, Minor Endurance, and Major Heroism. Uh, yeah, it's juiced up. It's so juiced up. But I, I wish they could juice it up more with, like, Major Slayer or Major Expedition. But, you know, obviously I don't think they'll go that far. However, the reason why I say this for VA is hard. I'm thinking about it. Single Target Sorcerer. You don't have to Bar Swamp. Uh, you're going full pure single target on the pure single target fight, plus you're getting unique buffs you never had before, really, like Major Heroism. Think about the ultimates. Major Force constantly. Think about the potential for this, like, really, especially for support players in terms of itemization. You just need to go more debuffs than anything else, really. So I, I think this is going to not just see an explosion of usage in solo instances or overlaying content or what, what have you. But I think we're going to see a lot of this in specific trials. But yeah, and last but not least, the Sea Serpent's Coil, another mythic I, ha I have my personal eye on. While at full health, you gain 40% damage reduction. That's huge. After taking damage while at full health in combat, which is basically a lot of fights, you gain Serpent's Rebuke for 10 seconds, snaring yourself by 40% and gaining Major Berserk and Major Courage, increasing your damage done by 10%, and weapon and spell damage by 430. So you're telling me I can just sit there as a DPS, take some damage, no big deal, because I'm getting 40% damage reduction anyway at full health, and I'm going to get free major courage, free major berserk, while standing there, parsing on the boss, and getting a unique amount of weapon and spell damage. Count me in. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the other item set changes uh, that is obviously outside of the new item set additions to the game. 
So let's start with the Vatashurn 2 ender, otherwise known as the Frenzy Momentum. They fixed an issue where the set ended early when used with forward momentum. So it doesn't matter now if you use Rally or forward momentum, uh, it should work now. Drakkin's Grip, a set that's you know been uh, heavily used in PvP, it now increases all of your damage done by 330 and reduces your healing taken by 10% rather than causing your direct damage attacks to cause enemies to take 617 more damage from your attacks for 6 seconds once every 9 seconds. Catalyst was not nerfed or buffed, however, they did get rid of a lot of the visual effects um, for both the wearer and potential maybe enemy players to reduce the amount of clutter on the screen, uh, which is great, that's always great to have. Glorious Defender, this set now causes you to do dodge all attacks made against you the next time you would have been hit for one second rather than only one attack. Again, kind of alluding to what I said earlier about Moore's Whispers, Harpooner's Waiting Kill was nerfed. Um, they slightly reduced the critical chance granted per stack to 110, down from 125, not the biggest deal. However, they also did reduce, initially at least, the duration of those 10 stacks to 20 seconds, or to 10 seconds down from a minute, but then they went back and realized, oh, well, people will probably not like that, especially when you're going from trash fight to boss fight, right? Um, so probably do, we'll probably do 20 seconds and that, and that's exactly what they did. So I think I will probably see some cases depending on maybe monster set usage for Moore's Whispers. I think though Moore's Whispers will probably replace Harpooner's Waiting Kill overall if you're going to go with a typical one piece slime crawl, uh, setup. Next, Hrothgar's Chill. Fixed an issue where the set would not proc off the stun from heavy attacking off balance target. Okay, Cargata, which is uh, the one of the newest monster sets um, from the first quarter of 2022, they fixed an issue where Cargata uh, was not properly scaling with AOE bonuses. Marcelock was actually buffed. Uh, surprisingly, this set has been a joke for a while. Um, ever since they kind of nerfed it. Uh, a couple times, I don't know why. Uh, this set now dynamically scales with the higher of your weapon or spell damage rather than on your weapon damage. Perfect. And the damage from this set now increases by 10%. By 10% per negative effect. Up from 2%. But has a cap of 300% rather than no cap. I mean, that's, what, 30 negative effects? I mean, that's this is, is going to be insane. But obviously, the way you proc it is... Still kind of a, like a deterrence for a lot of people because you do have to heavy attack with a, you know, do a melee heavy attack, by the way, um, to proc the set. But still, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if the damage from procking the set will outweigh that one heavy attack to proc the set every so often. So something to test and something to keep an eye on. Don't, don't, dis don't disregard Martial like just yet, guys. Spawn them and follow them. They fixed an issue where Spawn them and follow visual effects could fail to appear. Uh, they did sort of, uh, to not nerf or anything, but they just kind of took away something from Shadow Dancer's Raiment. Uh, this set now causes you to do dodge all incoming attacks within one second after leaving stealth or invisibility with an eight second cooldown on your dodge frame, um, rather than causing you to ignore the movement speed penalty of Sneak. Uh, they also took away the extra 129 stamina recovery on this five piece bonus. Uh, the next two sets I want to talk about is Tremor Scale and Zahn. So Tremor Scale, they increase the duration of the set's effects to 15 seconds, up from 8 seconds, which is nice. Although, there's still that one slight delay at the start of the proc where uh, the Dune Ripper still needs to affect the target for that armor penetration. However, they debuff uh, other aspects of the set as well. They increase the Tremor Scale's cooldown to 10 seconds, up from 8 seconds to compensate for that 8 to 15 second duration, which is not a big deal at all. They did increase the damage done by approximately 4%. So what this basically does, uh, apart from the 4% uh, damage buff, is once you get started on your Tremor Scale after the initial proc, it should basically uh, proc every time, like, without any delays in between the uptimes of it during the, f during the rest of the fight. So that's pretty cool. This set now reduces the armor of the enemy by 8% of the higher of your physical or spell resistance rather than uh, reducing it by a flat amount of 2,395. So, uh, let's quick quick math here. So, let's say you have 30,000 physical or spell resistance. So, 8% of that is going to be your armor penetration, right? So, let's put that in 30,000, uh, I don't know, 0.8. So, you're going to get 2,400 penetration off of 30,000 physical resistance or, or spell resistance, which is a like five, five, you know, penetration more higher 
Um, obviously, though, you may go over, you know, 30,000 or 31,000, stuff like that. Um, but that's, that's okay. Like, it's not a huge difference, so whatever. Um, Zan, the last set, I, I made a completely separate video about this if you want to see what it's like. And I talk about p the potential application of it, the potential nerfing of it, and in some cases, the buffing of it. But basically, just long story short, the set now applies a tether to the target that damages all enemies touching it rather than a beam that only touches the one target it procs on. So it's AoE now. They reduced the base damage, however, of Zon by approximately 52%. They did increase the duration of the set to 10 seconds or from 6. They did increase the cooldown of the set from 18 to 20 seconds to compensate for a duration increase. They also uh, gave Zon a guaranteed chance to apply burning every tick. And uh, probably the most detrimental thing for Zon uh, is the addition of another RNG gate to proccing it, which is requiring a critical light or heavy attack. So your light or heavy attack has to crit, and then you have the chance, through the 33% chance of proccing it, of getting Zon to activate. So, pretty interesting here. Um, and I, again, if you, if you want to check out the video uh, that I made about Zon, definitely do so, because I go into a bit more details about that. Uh, lastly, uh, I'm going to talk about... Uh, a side note here for the item set changes. So, Hersene's Veneer, the green ball set, Pearlis and Ward, Sanctuary, uh, another green ball set, and Worm's Raven, um, the blue ball set. So, uh, if you are an enemy player and you see somebody wearing this set, you would normally see the blue balls or green balls uh, floating around them. They are no longer visible to you if you're an enemy player. So, you can't tell who's going to be wearing um, these sets. Uh, lastly, the the following uh, item sets, such as Ebon, Hersene's Veneer, Pearlescent, Sanctuary, Worm, will uh, basically be guaranteed to persist even on dead players. Um, I think they've already always already persisted even when you are dead. They just made it clear um, in updating the tooltip. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are all the new item sets. Those are all the new mythics. Those are all the item set changes with update 34. Uh, hopefully the video helps in breaking uh, a lot of the patch notes down into basically a more deliverable form. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you, do you, are you guys going to check out any of the new mythics? Are you guys going to try using any com uh, new combos or any new item sets? Uh, I'm definitely going to check out a lot of these myself. But yeah, let me know down in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Stay safe, have fun, and see you guys next time.